Hello, hope you're all well. Today I'm going to revisit one of the devices from my previous video on RF dividers. So this is really a follow-on video, but it does also stand alone as a kind of mini review. This is the device from eBay, and this is what I had to say about it. So here it is, from eBay, complete with incorrect size resistors fitted to it. So someone clearly has not got a clue how this works and decided to pick fully fitting 51 ohm resistors is fine. If this were a delta configuration, then that would be absolutely okay. But this isn't, this is a Y configuration and wrong size resistors. So at some point I will buy some 16.7 or 16.66 ohm resistors and stick them on it to turn it back into a working device. So this is what we get from the vector network analyzer. So at one gigahertz, this is a five gigahertz device, by the way. We've got 11 dB of loss. We should only have about 6 dB. We've got a VSWR visor of 2.09, uh, and we should be looking at 1.2 to 1.5. 1.5 would be acceptable, 1.2 would be good. S11, which is the reflection, is minus nine. Now that should be, what, minus 20-ish, something like that. So this is really a walking disaster. Now, I did go back to the seller after leaving negative feedback. They asked what I wanted so they could get positive feedback. And I said, well, you know, send me two splitters with the right resistors fitted, please. So obviously at this point, I told them they'd fitted the wrong parts. They knew it was faulty. They increased the price in eBay and they offered me £2.40. Now, normally I would insist on uh, actually sending them back. That's not really an acceptable response to a faulty device. But in this case, I decided to accept because £2.40 will easily cover the cost of replacement resistors. I didn't want the hassle of sending these all the way back to China. And I did actually want to update the video and actually give a review on these. Um, now, I will go back to eBay. I will update my feedback, but it will be truthful facts from my experience. So it's not going to be very positive. OK, so I've got the spectrum analyzer set up exactly as I had before. And I'm using the full 3 gigahertz spectrum analyzer, and that's because these little things are advertised as 5 gigahertz. 5 gigahertz. So I figured 3 gigahertz, that's as high as I can read. So here's our S21, which is our through, so our forward direction transmission. And it should be minus 6 dB across the frequency range. And we can see minus 5, minus 6 by the looks of it, running down to quite a lot below. Um, so I'm just going to auto scale that so we can see it a little bit better so yeah so we start at 6 db and uh, let's get a marker on so we can see what's what and we're pretty much i mean if i say to there that's 390 megahertz minus 6 db i said minus 7 was acceptable and so and the reason for that is that tectronic ski site specified minus 6 plus minus well actually it's just minus 1.2 so 7.2 would be acceptable so we, yeah we're there at uh, 1.3 gigahertz you could argue that we're there till about here 1.9 gigahertz i suppose at a push but not beyond that we're, we're losing beyond that no doubt about it so you know okay so this five gigahertz commercial thing from china isn't even making it to two gigahertz so so far its performance is worse than my homemade little device just here. Now, admittedly, this has got a resistor array on it and it's physically a little bit smaller, but you know, the size is neither here nor there. Um, use a resistor array, but it's outperforming this by a serious amount. That resistor array on here is about £2.30 or, you know, probably £1 something if you buy them in the hundreds. Let's have a look at uh, the, the reflection then. Okay, so this line here is the minus 20 dB line, which I said is the line that we want to stay below. And we are below it for most of it. We're, we're, we're minus 30 dB right up to... Doo -doo -doo. About 206, 270 megahertz. And then where are we after that? Well, we're staying below minus 20 all the way to 1.93 gigahertz. 
So I'd say this has really got an effective usage range of only two gigahertz really. I'm up to minus 15 dB. Where do I hit minus 15? Somewhere here. Uh -huh, all right, minus 15, there we go. 2.3 gigahertz. So it's only really acceptable up to 2.3 gigahertz. Hmm, not impressive. Let's look at that in SWR, just for those who like looking at that. And we'll all the range that as well, just so you can see what's going on. So you can see the SWR is staying below 1.2. As what is same below 1.2 up to yeah about two gigahertz as you'd expect. If you're happy with 1.5, then 2.3 gigahertz to to match the uh, S11 that we were just looking at really there. So a quick look at the Smith chart. Okay, this isn't the biggest Smith chart in the world, but it's uh, pretty messy. We can see we're looping both through inductance and capacitance problems on there and of impedance as the frequency increases is varying backwards and forwards from the 50 ohm mark by quite a long way. So that's it really, a 2.3, 2.4 gigahertz is really the effective bandwidth of these guys, not five gigahertz as advertised. I mean, you could argue that it does go the words to five gigahertz, but its performance is pretty piss poor by the time you get there. So. Anyway, just a follow-on video. Hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done so, of course. And uh, I'll put the link in to the original video below.